Hi everyone, Snowflake Dan here with you. Today we're going to be going over how to move SFTP data into Snowflake uh, through a containerized notebook on Snowflake. So let's get straight into it. So here we can see a tutorial that I've written up that'll be linked in the description. Um, the first thing I want to call out here is that you cannot be on a trial. So uh, to basically use the container services that the notebooks will run on, uh, you actually have to be either on demand or on a capacity agreement. This is not a limit of the tutorial, just the limit of Snowflake. Then we'll want to download the necessary files that we're going to use later on, AKA the notebook itself that we'll be using. So in my setup and in today's tutorial, I'm going to assume that you have nothing, no databases, no schemas or anything. So simply I'll click over here. I'll copy that code over and I'll switch to Snowflake. So the first thing we'll want to do is add a worksheet. So we'll go to worksheets or projects, then worksheets, add a new worksheet, and we'll paste that in. This will create a database for us called raw and a schema called SFTP and a warehouse named development. So we'll simply run that and you'll see it's successful. So if we go over to the databases tab, we'll notice that if we do a refresh, we'll notice that now we have a raw and SFTP schema. And we've also granted those, or we've created these using the sysadmin role. This will be critical later on because account admin cannot uh, use these containerized notebooks or be the owner of them. Awesome, so let's go back to the tutorial. The next part is, is for this tutorial, we'll have to get a, uh, a certain objects to be able to talk to that SFTP or, or use these containerized notebooks. So we'll simply click on that code, go back to our worksheet, paste that in as well. I'm going to highlight a few things here. So the first thing is, is we're going to use this admin again. We're going to create a stage. A stage is like a folder inside of Snowflake so that we can move those files from the SFTP and land them into Snowflake. The next thing we'll use is a compute pool. So the notebook will use this compute pool. Um, it's a form of uh, compute so that we can have a file system in our notebooks. The next thing is, is a network rule to our SFTP. So this is going to be the URL that you use to connect to your SFTP. And in my case, mine is a uh, Azure uh, link or an Azure URL. So I'll simply paste that in there and you'll notice that there's a colon 22. This is very important because SFTP runs off of a specific port and we have to enable our, enable our Snowflake account to talk to that port. So I've pasted it in there and we're good to go. The next thing we'll add is a uh, PyPI network rule allowing our notebook to talk to PyPI, the Python repository for all the packages that we import or install. Because in this tutorial, we're going to use one of those uh, Python packages to allow us to not have to write much code to connect to that SFTP endpoint. The next thing we'll do is we'll use account admin to uh, enable that external access. And so inside of the notebook, we're going to actually check on these boxes to allow the notebook to have this communication later on. So we'll highlight all of that code and we'll simply click run. Now this take, might take a few seconds. It's usually pretty quick and we'll notice that all of that is successful. So if we go back to the tutorial, the next part is, is we'll want to import our IPYMB file, AKA the notebook itself or the example code that I've provided everyone. So we'll simply go back to Snowflake. We'll go to our notebook section and we'll want to add a new notebook. But before we do that, we actually want to switch our role because again, I said, you can't be an account admin when this happens, you'll get an error. So what we'll want to do is go to the bottom left-hand corner, switch our role and we'll switch to the sysadmin role. So we'll click on the little uh, uh, checkbox and we'll import a IPYMB file. So now if I head to my downloads folder, add the notebook, click on open, we'll notice that we're kind of brought into the menu of how we want to configure the notebook itself. So I'm simply going to call mine SFTP. I want to put it in the raw database and in the SFTP schema. We'll use that development warehouse we created and we'll want to check on the or check the run on container. 
Since this is just gonna be CPU based, we'll simply click on the CPU based runtime. This just means what packages will be pre-installed with it. If you were using a GPU uh, kind of workload, we would select the GPU one and a lot of GPU packages would be installed. Next, we'll wanna select that SFTP compute pool so that it runs on that. We'll click create. And what this will do is it will, uh, import that notebook and then like show it to us live, but it won't run the notebook right off the bat. And this is actually a really, really good thing because we have to enable the notebook to be able to talk to those specific endpoints. And we wanna edit the code a little bit to make it more towards our SFTP. So the first thing we'll wanna do, and, and just to call this out, we also showcase all of this in the documentation as well. So if you're following along, you can simply follow the pictures in the documentation. So what we'll want to do is simply click on the three dots in the top right hand corner, select notebook settings, select external access, and then we've got a few here. Now the ones that I want to select are the ones that are specific to the ones that I want to connect to. So the first one was, is that SFTP external access and also that PyPI uh, external access. So this will allow us to connect this notebook to those external services and be able to pull things from them. So we'll simply click save. And so now the notebook has been enabled with those uh, to ability to talk to those endpoints. But before we hit run all on any of this, we actually wanna update a little bit of code. We wanna say, hey, what do we wanna connect? What file do we wanna pull? So the first thing is gonna be the host name. Now I've already got a Azure uh, blob storage that has SFTP enabled in it. So if I wanted to see the data that's inside of there, I can click containers, click data, and I'll be able to see the data that actually lives in there. So I've got a folder with a CSV file in it, and we're gonna pull that file today. So if we switch back to Snowflake, uh, what I'll do is I'll grab my host name. This is traditionally known as the URL for your SFTP. We'll paste it in there. The next will be the username. So whatever username you're using to log in. And then we'll utilize our password. So uh, Azure generates a password for me. Um, by the time this video goes live, this blob storage will be completely gone. So no need to worry about this password. The next thing we'll have to do is add a remote file. So what is a remote file? Well, I need to know what file we're gonna pull from there, from our uh, SFTP. So I'm simply gonna pull the CSV folder and then pull this sample1.csv file into our Snowflake stage. So what I'll wanna do is simply give the path to it. So it was CSV and then sample01.csv. Perfect. So the next will be the stage. So in that setup code that we've kind of run, we've already set up a stage. So if we go to raw SFTP, we'll notice we have a stage here and we'll see we've got one called files. And so it follows that same pattern, raw as the database, SFTP as the schema, files as the name of the stage. Then I wanna put that file into the root directory. So maybe if I wanted to put it into a folder, I can put a folder name here. But to keep it simple, we'll simply add that there. Next, we'll notice we have a function here. Um, this is what will actually execute the code. And so to actually see the code, we could simply click on the function above, we can uncollapse it, and we'll notice we have a series of Python code here that does what we want it to do. Now, if you want to manipulate this code, or my favorite is just to take this code and put it into ChatGPT to customize it for what your use case is, feel free to do so. That's the whole point of this tutorial, is it's just an example of how to load a, a singular file or a zip file into a stage, but make it your own. Now we'll collapse that again, and we'll simply want to click Run All now. Now this will, pip install the package that I talked about. Then it'll do all of the imports necessary and you'll notice there's the uh, Python package that we'll use for the SFTP itself. And then we'll run that, we'll execute or create that function and then we'll actually execute that function itself. Now, you'll notice that the notebook didn't run instantaneously. 
like our traditional notebooks do. This is by design because we're using that compute pool or that file system underneath the notebook. So this will take a roughly about three to four minutes to actually start up. And so once it starts up, we'll come back and we'll see that everything is executed. Awesome, and so now we can see that after a few minutes, the notebook has ran. And so we'll notice that first we've installed our Python package, so we'll collapse that one. Next, we'll notice that we've ran our imports. We've executed our function, so I'll just collapse this one as well. We've executed our function. We've then connected to our SFTP or downloaded that sample CSV file. We've uploaded it to our stage and we've deleted the old one. So this is a lot of like management in case you have a lot of files going on as well with that function. And then if we did an LS, LS is a way of listing the files that are inside of our stage. We'll notice now that there is a sample underscore one dot CSV inside of there. So if we go to our databases and we go to our files, we'll simply click this little open stage button. And if we do a quick refresh, we'll notice now we've got a sample underscore one dot CSV file. And if we wanted to, we can simply do a load into table, give it a name, click next. And you'll notice that we can put this into a table if we wanted to. So this shows how we could do this with a individual file at one time but you might wanna change that Python code to download all of the files from an SFTP, or after you've loaded those files, or maybe you want to schedule this notebook, you could simply go to the top right-hand corner if you write the code so that maybe it pulls a file then deletes the file, and then do that on a schedule. You could simply go up to uh, the top right-hand corner and actually schedule this notebook to run on a regular basis so that it pulls maybe the files, then you've got a follow-on task in Snowflake to pull that and put it into a table. So this has been SFTP to Snowflake using containerized notebooks. Thanks for watching.